I didn't see you guys there. <laughs> well, folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Son Woodworks. My name is Caleb. And my sister's laughing at me because she thinks I'm a nerd. But, uh, today... <laughs> today I'm going to be building this bar for Kate's store! <laughs> Stay tuned. My sister and I have always been close. She has been an incredible friend during some of the hardest times, so when she asked me to come and build this bar in her new country store, not only was I thrilled, I was honored. Honored to take part in this new venture in my sister's life. Also, I got to spend some time in this little mountain town. Hope you'll stick around. All right, folks, first step in this project was to remove the old bar. You can see it was barely hanging on. This didn't take too much work as it was only held in by a few different nails and that small little support beam that I don't really even think was doing much. Right away, I could tell that the wall was not completely square with the floor. Those windows had definitely aged over the years. I believe this building was at least 100 years old but it added somewhat of a bulge in the wall um, which later on made it a bit difficult when mounting the 4x4s. Sorry lady, we are not open. I'll be using four separate 4x4s to support the bar as well as the shelves, the floating shelves that I'll be installing. The first two 4x4s will go on the first section of the bar and they will not go all the way up the uh, height of the window, uh, but the second two will. You can see here that I'm taking some measurements to determine how many of the 4x4s I was going to need for this project. I ended up actually running short and I had to use a piece of scrap 4x4 that uh, I had made some mistake. Curve cuts, uh, which I'll be doing later on in the build. My plan was to mount the four different 4x4s to the window inner casings uh, as well as the baseboard and so I took the 4x4 and I marked out the areas where that window casing and the baseboard and the apron of the window um, lined up with the 4x4 so that then I could do different depths of kerf cuts and actually fit the piece of 4x4 up into the uh, section of the wall. I wanted to ensure that I had a solid stud to drive the lag bolts that I'll be using to mount these 4x4s onto the wall. I uh, wanted to make sure that there was a good part to do that. So you can see here out on the workbenches, I am marking out the areas where I would need to do the different curve cuts at different depths. The two different depths I'll be doing will be 3 quarter inch and then an inch and a half. Uh, the 3 quarter inch will go for the baseboard and the main casing around the window, window and then the apron will get a bit of a deeper curve cut. Uh, it will be an inch and a half. If you've never done a curve cut like this, essentially you set the depth of your blade to the depth that you want to cut and the depth of the kerf or what will end up being kind of like a dado cut. Um, and then you just do continuous passes in the area 
and then uh, you use a chisel to hammer out the uh, sections of wood and it comes out really easy. This is a great option if you're um, traveling like I was uh, back in Montana visiting for the holidays. Couldn't bring my table saw, I didn't have enough space. So this whole project is done with just this single saw. I had a bit of issues <laughs> with the battery at one point. Uh, batteries, I ended up buying some new batteries because I killed them all doing so many curve cuts. Um, but once again, this is a good option. Try it out. Two of the 4x4s that I used for this project actually set up in uh, the shed or one of the sheds at my parents' house for last year. I thought that it was going to be scrap wood, but then I ended up getting to use it for this uh, project, which is very satisfying. The other 4x4s I picked up at a local supply store. Uh, they're relatively cheap. Got some ones that uh, were kiln dried and pretty straight. And then the slab itself, I actually sourced from a guy up in the mountains, not far from where this project is going on. He was just outside of Lincoln, Montana. You may know Lincoln because of the Unabomber. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I found this guy on Craigslist and I went up into the mountains and he was selling all these slabs that he cut up from this fallen blue pine tree. Uh, that had died on his property a couple years before it fell and then it fell it was really big very wide um, and then he used a big bandsaw mill to cut it up and these slabs were not that expensive it was awesome um, I got I think six of them and I put them in my tiny little Subaru at the time and uh, barely I could barely fit in the car with all of the different slabs to drive them home I used the first two slabs to build an island back in my old house that had some pot stores on one side and then the other side was uh, used to sit on some stools. I think it turned out nice. Great thing about these 4x4s is that they'll be mounted to the wall and these cuts will be hidden so they don't have to look great. Probably should have clamped down this piece as I was doing this but once again it's not too hard after you do those curve cuts to clean up the wood, the excess wood that doesn't actually get cut by the saw. I was pretty happy that I had good weather this day to do the work, the majority of the cuttings outside uh, behind the store. These little Stanley planes are pretty handy for smoothing down really rough surfaces like this. Once I had finished doing all the curve cuts and cleaning up a bit of the surfaces with a plane and chisel, it was time to move on to pre-drilling the holes for the lag bolts. But before we do that, let's take a break. Well folks, I appreciate you tuning in to my channel. Like I said, my name is Caleb uh, and this is Second Sun Woodworks a collection of DIY videos, mainly woodworking, but there's some other great stuff. So if you haven't checked out my channel, go over to my library, check out what I have to offer, watch my videos, waste some time, or maybe use your time wisely because it'll inspire you to get in the shop and build something cool. That's usually what I say. So this is my sister's store. We got gas. She's got gas. Got lots of gas. <laughs> Not all gas. Um, but no, seriously, she sells gas. And she sells other good stuff too, so uh Hello, hello. How you doing? Good. Well windy out there. It is, today is nasty. It is nasty. Restroom. Yeah, go ahead, yeah, it should work. That door is yeah, there you go. Thank you. No worries. What else do I need to say? Oh, welcome to my channel. If you're new, <laughs> hit the subscribe button down below and you'll get a prize. Ooh. Actually, you probably won't. All right, let's get back to the project build. The next step was to cut the ends of the 4x4s that will be exposed. So the top of the four different beams, as well as the three that will poke out on the bottom side of the bar. To do this, I just set my DeWalt circular saw to a 45 degree angle and I marked out uh, an inch from the end of each of those and then I uh, just cut off 
uh, a bit on each side so that you get a nice um, kind of angled look on the end of those 4x4s. Be really careful doing this with a circular saw though. Um, it can be dangerous. These 45 degree angle cuts add a nice decorative element to the wood. It's a little less harsh than just a straight 90 degree cut you know, that a 4x4 comes with. These support posts that I'm constructing kind of remind me of a mailbox support pole or something that you would, you know, put a mailbox on because it has a 4x4 like this that will support the underside of the bar that butts right into another 4x4 that will be on the bar and it's, you know, it's a 90 degree angle, but then there'll be a support beam that is at 45 on the underside. You can actually buy beams like this that are already built uh, from a construction supply store, you know, to hold a mailbox or to be part of a fence or something like that. But since the live edge piece has different widths, I wanted to do more of a custom size uh, for each of those since three of them will have the support beam uh, attached for the bar top. Um, instead of going ahead and mounting them onto the uh, two or the other 4x4s, I first needed to mark out the areas where I would be pre-drilling some holes for those big lag bolts to attach these 4x4s to the interior window casing on the wall inside of the store. To do this, I used a uh, hole punch or a, uh, uh, a punch with a hammer to uh, start the hole. Then I drilled uh, two different holes, one with a Forstner bit that fit the size of the washers, um, and then the second hole will go all the way through for the actual lag bolts. This is important uh, to pre-drill these holes like this uh, before you try to drill <laughs> lag bolts. You can't really just drill a lag bolt straight through something like this. So The lag bolts that I picked up at the hardware store, I think were three inches a piece, three inches long. Um, so I did the Forstner bit insert about half an inch into the outside of the 4x4s. And then like I said, the rest of the pre-drill holes here in a second, I'll use a different bit and I'll actually drill all the way through. Um, and this makes it look a whole lot nicer. It's also a good idea to do these holes, to pre-drill these holes before you do any sanding um, so that you can clean up the areas where you do pre-drill those holes. After I was done, as that, done with that, I went ahead and moved on to the process of adding the support beams and those 45 degree angle cuts to create the full post. Uh, I used some glue, pre-drilled some holes, and then some construction screws on the back side, uh, as well as just on those 45 degree angle boards um, to attach everything together. And I should actually note that I don't attach everything together just yet. I just wanted to pre-drill all of the holes. And then before, I actually add the glue and the construction screws to hold everything together, uh, I will do some sanding. Like I said, that's a good idea to do before. It just makes it easier. Um, you'll be able to get to the corners and, and to all the sections of each of those pieces of wood when they're separated, uh, as opposed to when they are together. After that, it was time to sand all of the different pieces for those first two posts. I forgot to mention too that these first two posts, or maybe I did mention earlier on in the video, but these first two posts only go up about 40 inches up the side of the wall. They don't go all the way up to the top of the windows like the next two beams in the next part of this series will be constructed. but. They essentially go up enough so that the bar can sit on the support beams and then there'll still be a bit of leftover 4x4 that comes up um, above the bar. it will have those angle cuts, those decorative cuts on the top, and you'll be able to see one of the bolts. This is just the design that I came up with. I thought it looked kind of cool and I think it turned out well. Once everything had been sanded down, it was time to attach the various pieces together, starting with the 
smaller of the two beams. This one will be at the end of the bar that's closest to the wall. Uh, it, because um, the bar itself is super narrow down there at the end, the tree must have, I think that was more closer to the top of the tree. So the live edge area is pretty short. So I wanted the support beam to not be coming out as far from the wall. So that's this first one. And you can see here that I'm attaching construction screws, four construction screws into the back side so they'll be hidden and then using some wood glue and then I attach the uh, 45, I keep calling it a 45 degree angle cut but the support beam that will be on the underside. If you have a better word to describe that, put it in the comment section below. Um, but uh, again, using construction screws and glue to hold everything together. This shinnit budge uh, with the glue the construction screws will hold it in place until that glue dries and then uh, it should last a long time. Whenever I'm drilling pieces like this I tend to add the four screws or in this case four screws to the workpiece and get them started into those holes um, and then I move on to actually adding the glue and attaching everything and that that way I um, I'm not moving the piece around a bunch while I'm trying to get that screw to start. I got these tough built foldable sawhorses right before I came up to Montana for the holidays uh, so that I could transport a uh, pair of these pretty easily and, and I like them. They're awesome. They're uh, super easy to set up and they fold up way better than the other pair uh, that I have back in Santa Barbara. Uh, those ones are cobalt, and they're just not as good as these tough build. I got these tough build on Amazon for pretty cheap. Once the two beams had been fully constructed for the first section of the bar, I went ahead and went back into the store and moved on to attaching them to the wall and like I said earlier on in the video I'm attaching them to the interior window casing uh, you'll see here in a second that I pre-drill the lag bolt holes and then I attach the lag bolts using my impact driver and the correct size uh, fitting and these things are really attached well after I'm done they uh, they are not gonna budge which is great. That's what I wanted. Also, like I had mentioned earlier on in the video, you can now see the reason why the first support beam on this first uh, section that I'm attaching to the wall is a bit shorter than the second one because the live edge piece is more narrow down there. Also, it worked out really well with the door that's up against that wall. Uh, I didn't want the bar itself poking out too far and, and the piece of live edge actually just fits right into that corner perfectly. It's great. But you won't actually see that until the next few parts of this series. Um, so make sure that you check them out when they are released. Alright folks, for those of you who have stayed until the very end of this video, thank you. You are awesome. Um, I really appreciate you and appreciate you watching the entire video. But this isn't the end of this project, so make sure that you stay tuned for the next part where I will build the next two beams, attach those to the wall, uh, and then I will attach the bar, do the floating shells, and then finish the whole thing with polyurethane. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, really appreciate it if you did that right now. Uh, and like I always say, 
get in the shop, build something cool. Take care, folks. Oh, we got somebody coming in to get gas.